is Mike Shaw. I'm 27 years old from Vernon, British Columbia, and I have a story to tell you. Growing up in the Okanagan was pretty, pretty rad because in the winter or the summer, there was always something to do. So like I grew up on the lakes or in the mountains. But yeah, when I sort of got a little bit older through around grade 11, I started realizing that my passion was for freestyle skiing and I became a freestyle skier at the age of 16 or started doing jumps and tricks anyway, that's what this sort of freestyle describes. But so we were down there for the first competition of the year. It was a World Cup called the US Grand Prix and it was taking place at Copper Mountain in Colorado. Anyway, down towards the bottom of the run in the park there was a man-made roller. So we looked at it, but I even said to my guys, I was like, no, listen, um, it could, the snow could be punchy here. It could be grabby, inconsistent because of the, man, the snow gun that was there. So let's just go suss it out, check out the landing and stuff like that. And the first few laps through, that's what we did. On the last run, <laughs> I coached my guys, I stood at the top with them. The three of them rolled down through their tricks as I was coaching them. Because all three of them had gone already, I kind of rushed through any kind of pre-drop or pre-drop in routine that I would have had and took off down the hill towards this roller. Did my nose butter 720 and came out facing downhill properly, everything like I should. But I landed in some snow that caused my skis to basically stop. Like it was really soft. It happened so fast that I couldn't like I just hit, I slammed so hard and I was like, whoa, that like took me completely off guard. And I was like, geez, that was a hard hit to my face. Like I didn't even get to tuck and roll. I didn't get my hands out to lighten the impact or anything like that. And I just felt it like the ground came up and hit me in the face so hard that I was like, holy shit. Like I thought I, I don't know what I thought. I was like, that was crazy. And then I was kind of going like falling. And I was like, whoa, what the hell is going on? And I was tumbling. And as I was tumbling, it, it clicked like right away. And I was like, oh my God, hard hit, unexpected, right to my face. I felt a really sharp pain in my neck and that's when that registered. And then I just didn't feel anything. And I was still tumbling down the hill and I couldn't move or I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't get up, right? So I was like falling uncontrollably and sliding down. And I just started screaming like, no, like, no, 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 no basically like a bunch of swear words in there, I'm sure. And I just realized that like that hard hit, that sharp pain in my neck and then nothing meant that I'd broken my neck and paralyzed myself from the neck down. That, that was like, that was before I even stopped falling. And then I slid to a stop and was like, just panting. I'm like, just going like, no, 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 no. This like, this didn't happen. This isn't happening right now. What the heck? And then I was angry for a second because I was like, I should have landed that trick. I want redemption on it. And I was pissed because I was having such a good day that I was like, I'm not even going to get to try it again. I should have landed that. That's not fair. But then, uh, so I was kind of funny. But then I came to like some more sobering thoughts about thinking about what had just happened. And what was, uh, like, you know, I thought about my family. I thought about how lucky I was that I, I did like a mental check. I was like, do I have a concussion? Do I have a concussion? I can't. I can't move. I was like, as long as I can still think, like, oh, I'm good. So the doctors came and they ended up getting me prepared to, to move. And I was really concerned about what was going to happen with my arms because my arms were, they were like this. Like, they were just crossed in front of my chest. And I was like, that is such a weird way to crash. And then all they did, this is when I realized that it was pretty bad, is they, they took my one arm that was up like this, which was closing in all the light. And they took my arm and they put it down beside my body. And that's when all the light came in. And I was like... Holy shit, that was my arm that was covering my face, not snow. That was, that moment changed my life in like a split second. And from then on out, it's been a constant battle for like rehabilitation and recovery. And that was that by about midnight that night, at 1230, I was in surgery getting my neck fused. I don't remember going into the surgery because I had I was so drugged, but apparently like, cause I woke up from surgery and I could, I could move, I could open and close my elbows. Like I was like, whoa, you know, like it was an instant change. I don't know if it was before or after, but my, my friend told me when he was like wheeling me off down the, down the hallway in the hospital and I had to go into an elevator and it was as far as he could go. I was like, Colin, don't worry, man. It's going to be all right. And I just lifted my arms up to give him a high five.
and then my elbows gave way, and I double punched myself in the face. <laughs> And just thought it was the funniest thing ever. Like, I just, he stopped me and he heard me getting into the elevator and I was just laughing my head off. Like, laughing so much. Into the second day, I think I woke up sometime in the night and I just felt different. I felt something had happened and something had changed. And I woke up and I, I tried moving and I tried moving my legs and I tried and nothing happened. And I tried and I tried again. Then I lifted my knee like an inch or two inches off the bed and lost my mind. I was like, oh my God, did I just move my legs? I was like, Colin, he, he was there the whole time and he was sleeping in this little crappy chair behind my bed. Look, I was like, turn on, turn on the lights, turn the lights on right now, like this is crazy. And I, and I moved my legs and I shifted them like a tiny bit, like just enough to lift my knee off the, off the bed like two inches. And I was like, man, I can move my legs. And he's like, and he just lost it. He started screaming and shrieking and like, <laughs> like, and then his nurse ran in because she didn't know what was going on. And we were like, and he's like, he can move his legs. He can move his effing legs. Like, it was pretty exhilarating. But that was kind of, that was all within the first two to three days, uh, two days, I think. Like, I remember the first time I was able to brush my teeth for myself. I cried. I was so happy because I could just do it myself. Even if it took me like two hours to get out of bed that day, that would be like the day that I would have to dig the deepest and go like, okay, when I get to physio, I'm gonna work really hard today so that hopefully tomorrow or hopefully the next day or next week, I don't have to spend two hours getting ready for my day. I went skiing for the first time three months and one week after my injury in a chair, in a sit ski, in Revelstoke with a, an organization called the Live It Love It Foundation. So that was really fantastic. Like I was back on the mountain. I was back in the mountains, smiling, sharing experiences with friends. In December of 2014, a year to the day, like on December 16th, I took my first turns on skis. So I went, I went uh, with I think a group of like 40 or 30 or 40 people or something like that. It was huge, like all of my friends and that came out from Whistler that came out to support me. It was different. It was totally challenging and really hard, but I made it down. And I, you know, one year to the day to my accident, it was a huge, huge victory. I guess what I've learned and what I would share with people is like, well, for one, what's hard is hard. What's hard for you might not be hard for me, but something that's hard for me might also be a walk in the park for you. It just depends. But what, whatever it is that you're facing, and everybody faces hardship at some point or another, but what's hard is hard. And the process for getting over it's the same for the most part from what I've been able to, to figure out. And it's that you have to accept Whatever the hardship is or whatever's happened, you've got to, the first part is acceptance. You can't start moving forwards until you accept what happens on a basic level and realize that the past is the past. You can't, like, for instance, with my injury, like, there, there are definitely times, don't get me wrong, that I might say, like, yeah, I, I wish I had my old physical attributes and my athleticism and all that kind of stuff, but I am super grateful that I'm not, that I'm able to walk and I'm able to do things like go skiing and pretty uh pretty crazy